Welcome to this service of the word on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. When we have our readings, when we choose our readings, sometimes we, uh, we make a choice which, you know, is, is difficult. So I don't want to leave out the reading from the book of Revelation today. Today, this Sunday is kind of a new, you could almost call it new Sunday. Everything is new. And I hope that your experience of this service of the word leads you to some thoughtfulness about where you're at in life and all of that. Uh, and, and, and look and listen and uh, be prepared for new beginnings after hearing this lesson or, or the whole service of the word today. Again, welcome to you. This is from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, compared, I'm sorry, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them, and they will be God's people, and God will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. So this speaks of new beginnings. And I hope in this service of the Word today, you can find a new beginning for yourself in whatever way, however small, however large. God bless you and welcome to this service of the word. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All love is original in God. It is God's love which dwells within us. And from that indwelling love, we offer our love, a self-transcending love. Loves within love, within love. Today in this magnificent gospel, this mysterious gospel, we hear Jesus speak of the indwelling love of God. He uses the word glorified. Now God's love will be glorified in me. My love will be glorified in God. And the extension, the New Testament extension of that is that, that love which glorifies us or sanctifies us is from God, the indwelling God. But it's important to see the context of this moment in which Jesus speaks of this nesting one glory within another. It's hard to figure out. Jesus is at the table. This is happening on the night of the Last Supper, before the crucifixion. And the season of Eastertide brings this back to us to reflect on how Jesus was with us before the crucifixion. And we read in John 13, when he had gone out, so who is the he? The he is Judas. Judas has just received communion from Jesus. And after he has received that morsel of bread, he goes out to betray Jesus. And we're told, and it was night. The night, of course, it was night. It was a physical night, but it was also now a spiritual night in the darkness. And Jesus knew that the departure of Judas signaled the beginning of a series of actions that would lead to his crucifixion. So noting the departure of Judas, the one who was to betray him, Jesus turns to his community and says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. Now, why is it a new commandment? It's a new commandment because we've been invited previously to love our neighbor as ourself. And that is still wonderfully valid and powerfully challenging. But we're, but we're being called in this to raise our sights, to know that we're not just talking about a decision that we make to love our neighbor, but that we are being drawn into this glorifying love of the one who is about to be betrayed and who sees in the very act of betrayal the beginning of his glorification in God. As I say, not easy to understand, but here's how I understand it in practical terms for us as we are being called into this new love, this new life, if we can stand in the darkness of not knowing where life is taking us, if we can stand in a moment, let's 
use the biblical example here, if we can stand in a moment of betrayal and know and, and, and feel the freedom of God helping us to stand in a moment of betrayal or maybe a moment of profound loss, heartbreak, even tragedy, if we can stand in that darkness and know that in that darkness we are being glorified by God. That is to say, loved beyond measure by the infinite and eternal love of God, even in the darkness, even in tragedy, even in betrayal, maybe even in the heat of anger, we become aware that God's love is present within us despite how we feel. That is a that is a self-transcending love. But the Bible makes no bones about it. That self-transcending love is the presence of God alive in your heart. And it's that kind of love which distinguishes the Christian. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And I also want to say, we've heard about the new heaven and the new earth. That capacity to be free within a moment of intense disappointment or tragedy or fear or anxiety is the seed of the new heaven and the new earth within you. At that moment, if you can stand within that trial, that time of trial, that is the beginning of the heaven, the new heaven and the new earth within your own heart. So even in the night, even in the moment of betrayal, we can know the self-transcending love of Jesus within us. For this we give deep thanks. We are graced by this. And in that knowledge, we become grace one for another. God bless us all. Amen. Let us pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to, to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world you have made. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. Place holy love in the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. Today we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Ruth, Gail, Cassie and Jeremy, Christopher and family, Jonathan, Lynn, Mike, Mary Ann, Sharon, Marion, David, Fred, Charlie, and Anita. And we pray for all those who are homebound in nursing homes or in assisted living facilities and remember all those who have died. 
We pray for the people of the Ukraine, remembering especially our friends, Tatiana, Natasha, Nas Natasha, Paulina, Zaleta, and Masha. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each other's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children and kindred of Christ. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we're, we're, we're so happy you were able to be with us today. Let me repeat the words of Jesus. When he had gone out, that's Judas. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Mysterious words for us but they speak of the indwelling power and grace of God within you. For God is glorified in you, and you are glorified in God. That is to say, as you persevere in faith to offer love, reconciliation, grace, patience, forbearance to the world, even while you are being uh, compressed by events or anxiety, you will experience a freedom to love even the person who might be berating you in the moment. So there's an incredible freedom in this mutual indwelling, which is God's free gift to all of us. Amen. Now let me offer a blessing. The blessing of God, all present, the blessing of God incarnate and the blessing of God, the free gift of the Holy Spirit indwelling 
glorifying you in your day-to-day -day life. Amen.